Hi, VC. It's Aaron, Mitha Elmer. Today I'm going to continue my series, which features the albums that changed my life. Now, before I said that Josh's video is the one that inspired me to do this, but actually Melinda Murphy started this. I mean, someone probably did it years ago, but M Melinda Murphy actually started this. My good friend Gary from Physical Format reminded me of that. And I went back and I said, oh yeah, I watched that video. <laughs> I couldn't remember who did it, but I'd like to apologize. So, uh, I'll, I'll leave a link to Melinda's video. It's awesome. She's great. She's one of the best in the VC. And this here is kind of my second stage of getting into music. So, you know, after the, the initial wave of my parents' influence on music, I kind of developed my own taste in music. And this is before I really got into the hard rock and metal, which came in towards the end of this, which will be my next part. But this here are albums that are like out the albums and bands that I discovered on my own. Starting with this album here, Police Zenyatta Mandata. Now, I always kind of liked the police, but when I discovered this album, I, I totally become immersed in them. And then, you know, after this, uh, Ghost of the Machine and then Synchronicity came out. But this album here is the one that really grabbed me. Still my favorite police. I love Canary in a Coal Mine and do 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 da 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 da. And then, you know, Sounds So Close to Me is maybe my favorite police song. But, you know, even stuff like Beyond, uh, Behind My Camel is really good. I love this whole album, my favorite Police album. And they were really um, one of the first bands that I got into on my own. Now, another one, and this is kind of partially inspired by my stepdad, Ron, because he was playing this album, and I knew them. But then um, it was Creedence Clearwater Revival with the first record. And this is the one I actually heard first that got me really into them. And this is a great sounding album here. I love it, you know, Suzy Q and Put a Spell on You, all that stuff. But this whole album's really good. But then one, my second album I actually bought with my own money was Chronicle. After that Beach Boys record, this is my second album I actually bought. And I remember going to the mall. I was living in New York at the time and buying this. And, at the, and it was just, I was blown away by how great all the songs were. And then, and then I went back and discovered all their other music. Because uh, at that time, you know, I didn't have a lot of money, so I... I was, you know, didn't buy a lot of albums. So this is one of my very first ones. This album's one of the best, greatest hits ever. And everything on it's amazing. Just a great one. And another band I was really getting into was Men at Work from Australia. Business as usual. And then when Cargo came out, these two albums I absolutely love. Um, Cargo I like a little more, but this is, I mean, they're both excellent. Just uh, amazing. And actually they were the biggest selling band in america that was non-american in the 80s which is really odd to think about that because they only really had those two albums yet they had the most uh album sales by a foreign band in america in the 80s another band i was really into was duran duran i always liked them i don't care what anyone says i love duran duran this album was the one i got into first you know with rio hungry like the wolf and save a prayer even the deep cuts are great on it but then when this album came out, it became my favorite, Seven and the Ragged Tiger. I actually like this better. Union of the Snake is probably my favorite Duran Duran song. It's got the reflex, New Moon on Monday on here. Great album. I, I love Duran Duran. Um, probably my favorite synth pop band. Easily, it's easily my favorite synth pop band. So there you go, Jeff. <laughs> and then this album came out, and I, I got into this around the same time as Credence, and it was John Fogarty's Center Field. This album I played to death. I absolutely love it. I remember hearing Old Man Down the Road while I was in art class in school. And I just, every time that came on, I was like, I got all excited because I love that. You know, I love every song on this. If Vans Can't Dance, every song, Searchlight, great album all the way through. And I like this probably better than most Credence albums. It's right there with them to me. This is like the, the extra Credence record to me. Love that album. Another band I really got into then uh, back, you know, in the 80s was the Hooters with Nervous Night. This is one of my favorite albums of the 80s. I absolutely love this album. And I felt, you know, it's one of those bands that you discover on your own and not a lot of people know about. So it kind of makes them your own. And All You Zombies was the song I heard first. And that really got me into it. But this whole album, you know, and we dance day by day. Every song's good. Uh, Where Do the Children Go with Patti Smythe. What a great song. This is an amazing album. One of my favorites of the 80s. The Hooters with Nervous Night. And I always loved this album. Billy Squire, Signs of Life. Now, nowadays, I like Don't Say No Better. But at the time, this was the album that got me into Billy Squire. Rock Me Tonight is one of my favorite Billy Squire songs. Probably my second favorite after In the Dark. But, you know, Eye on You's on here all night long. What a great album. This is the album that got me into Billy Squire, and I still love it to this day. 
And then we got this band, which I absolutely love too. This is Loverboy. And I saw them on the tour for this, loving every minute of it. But these two albums, these two Loverboy albums, just blew me away. That was, it was kind of discovering a little heavier side. It was not heavy metal, but a little harder edge of stuff I was used to. And I really liked that. And for my last couple, these are the two that influenced me the most in the 80s, other than the hard rock and metal, which will be the next video. So this is the album that really got me to become, this is my favorite artist for about a year. Greg Kim, Citizen Kim. This album, it was one of his mid 80s records. And I absolutely love this. It's got, you know, Whenever, one of my favorite songs, Lucky. Uh, every song I love in this, it's a little more uh, keyboard than most of the Greg Kim stuff, but it's phenomenal songs, amazing album. I love this album. Probably my favorite Greg Kim after Rock and Roll, which is his masterpiece with, you know, and then Conspiracy. These three Greg Kin albums, really, I was just so into Greg Kin at the time, and not a lot of people liked him either. I was into bands that like that. I've always been into, like, the more obscure stuff ever since I was young, even though they're not really that secure. And then the final one that really blew me away, and this is kind of the bridge into my next video, ZZ Top with Eliminator. When this came out, I was totally obsessed, and I still love this album. This is still my favorite ZZ Top after the first four. I mean, the first four are untouchable to me, and then Eliminator's right there, almost as good. And I also was really into Afterburner. These two albums, and this album is very underrated. It's a little more commercial than Eliminator, but um, the song Woke Up With Wood, that guitar riff is one of the best guitar riffs of the 80s, absolutely amazing. I love this album too. Well, there we go. That's my second part. Next up, I think start getting heavier and then metal and we'll see where it goes from there. Have a great one, everyone. I'll see you next time.